Okay, Nick, let's switch gears now and focus on a couple of big games coming up in match week 23 of the Premier League season. First, we'll focus on Leeds United against Manchester United. Can Leeds cause a huge upset? That's what I'm going to ask you because you know, they face each other at Elland Road just a few days after that enthralling two-all draw at Old Trafford. And Leeds were 2 no up. They were looking good, uh, but they didn't see it out, which has been a big problem for them throughout the season. They're obviously managerless right now after sacking Jesse Marsh. We're not sure that they'll have a new manager in time. They're struggling to, to find a new head coach to replace him. But what are your thoughts on Leeds United heading into this game? Because Ellen Road's going to be electric. Been lucky enough to be there uh, over the years. And that place is, is wild. And I was there for the Man United uh, game last season when they lost. And it was a crazy end-to-end -end battle. And it feels like when these two teams meet recently, all the games have been similar, right? It's just been absolute chaos at both ends of the pitch. Listen, uh, yes, Leeds has to hope its crowd and its stadium, which has been electric, continues to be that. Because I, watching that game the other day, was obviously everybody was surprised when it was 1-0 after a minute. Uh, <laughs> but when it went to 2-0, I remember thinking, how is this game 2-0? If anything, I would have thought it was at least 1-0 in the other direction. And Leeds is going to have to not only have uh, – this better rested legs, better fitness, better, you know, somehow overcome all of those things. Uh, but they have to overcome the fact that the performance was, in my opinion, still inferior to Manchester United um, by some ways. And I kind of fear how this could look at the other end. And I think it may hasten a new appointment if we don't have one by then, at least. Yeah, yeah definitely. And obviously, the, the coaching staff, the interim staff and the caretakers said they wanted to make Leeds a bit more pragmatic. And we we kind of saw that, but then we kind of saw them slipping into their old habits, didn't we, uh, against United? So, um, obviously, Gnoto was excellent uh, out wide, and um, they have some great... Weston McKenney was good, Tyler Adams snapping into challenges. This is their kind of game, right? Those two American midfielders, local rivalry. There is no love lost between Leeds and Man United. So, I feel like there is a twinge of an upset in the air, considering they played each other twice in a few days, but... Also, part of me is thinking Man United's superior playing staff, I would say, will figure it out. The likes of Bruno Fernandes, Rashford, um, and, and others, that they'll figure it out uh, after seeing perhaps some gaps in, the, in Leeds' defence. And the improved performance in the second half told me that they'd already started to figure it out during that game. Uh, but the issue really, right, was that sluggish start. They improved when Jaden Sancho came on and he got the goal and it was great to see him back. But yeah. how much did... United miss Casemiro because that was the obvious question, right? After his red card, that they're really going to miss him in midfield because he's been their most important player this season. I know Rashford scoring the goals, but if you take Casemiro out of this United team, isn't quite the same. Yeah, I mean, there's no other way to say it. I, I think he is a an absolute force. He gives them the experience. He has been in literally, well, not literally, but almost literally every situation you can imagine uh for a midfielder it honestly feels like he's older than he is that him and him and Busquets both seem to live in our memories as if they could be if you told me you know what secretly they're 50 I'd be like yeah. wow they look great but it does seem like they've been around that long uh yeah. and they just you know United you know, doesn't have that otherwise I like Fred quite a bit I like McTominay to a certain extent but you cannot replicate Casemiro and so between his absence and the fact that there's still a um, there's still a team without a home when it comes to center forward. Um, I don't think Veghorst has been terrible, but he certainly is not the sort of player who's going to win you the Premier League. And that was fully evident the other day. And it says something that I'm sitting there thinking, man, if only they had a healthy Anthony Martial. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm thinking. That says something. Yeah, no, definitely. I think we've seen that United, the strength of their squad compared to the competitors there just isn't quite there, right? If you had take Casemiro out, if you take Martial out, if you take uh, Varane out, uh, they still got good players, but it still isn't the, the levels of Arsenal, Man City. I'd even, I know they're struggling, but even Chelsea and Liverpool seem to have stronger squads uh, than Manchester United right now. But if they can stay fit, um, the 1-11 to 11 is right up there with the best in the Premier League at the moment. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm struggling to see United um, not finishing in the top four this season. I think there's a ruthlessness about them now uh, where they can just get the job done. And even if they weren't at their best at the start of that game against Leeds, it kind of uh, got that old Fergie spirit back, didn't they, with the comeback and 
And just the changes were good. The changes were good. Like I said, Sancho was excellent. Rashford found a way to get another goal. Um, and they're just getting it done. So the key battle for this game, what do we think? Is it, you saw Tyler Adams and Savitza chatting afterwards, the former, you know, Leipzig teammates there, they're having a good chat. I feel like Adams and McKenney in particular, I know we focus on them a lot as USMNT fans and, and people who cover them closely. But that, that seems particularly key with Casemiro missing. For Lisa, try and win that midfield battle, press high. That's where they had success against United last time out. If they can do that and crowd the midfield, then you can stop the ball getting to Bruno, to Rashford, to Anthony if he's playing, right? So this is, for me, the key battle. Is it, do you agree with that? I do agree with that. It's, it's, it's a way that they can take advantage or excuse me seize control or at least get a foothold in the game i think ultimately if i can add to what you're saying uh, the the real question is going to be whether guys like uh volber uh and, and cook can can shut down united's attack because um rashford is at his very best yep uh he is explosive he looks like he may get on the end of every ball that goes into the box uh service has been better and i think rashford is honestly starting to drag the best out of Bruno, who to a point before this was maybe getting a little lost in trying to do too much himself. Yeah. And I think he's looking a little freer now. And with Sancho coming around, you know, I, I do think the question becomes leads, as we've asked since Marcelo Bielsa brought the team up, can you stop teams from scoring? Quick question. Would you start Rashford centrally and start Sancho maybe out wide? Would that be a way to to solve some of those issues for United in the central attacking area? I almost said that a little bit ago, but my question is at this point, as much as an Eric Ten Hag is going to run a ship where he does what he wants to do, mm -hmm. I get that. But if I'm a manager, no matter how good of a manager I am, I'm talking to maybe the most informed player it's, it's him and Kane right now. They've stepped ahead of Holland. And I'm saying, hey, listen, I know you prefer to come from out wide. We're missing something right now. Are you going to be off your game at all? And he, He'll find a better way to ask the question than me. But that's what I want to know because anything that stops Marcus Rashford from being peak Marcus Rashford, I'm not doing it. Yeah, true. So that's a big dilemma, I think, for him to try and figure <laughs> out that attacking area of the pitch. Okay, prediction for Leeds United against Man United. What are you going with? An upset? No. Um, because it's at Ellen Road, I'm going to stop from predicting a full-blown blowout. I'm going to say 3-1 to one for Manchester United. Okay. I'm going to go 2-1 to Man United. I think they just have that little bit of extra tack in now, now, and I think that they will have figured out how to play against Leeds. And uh, maybe Leeds will just run out a bit of steam. It's a lot, right? Wednesday to Sunday, playing each other twice. And I think sometimes it just kind of shakes out that the better players figure out a way in that second game. Um, to, to find those openings and those gaps. So it's going to be fun. Head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for that massive rivalry game. Leeds against Man United, Allen Road. We'll have you covered with the how to watch information, preview, team news, analysis and reaction during and after the game. We'll have all angles covered. This is a massive game in English football and it's going to be huge to see if Man United can keep the pressure on the teams above them and if Leeds United can drag themselves further away from the relegation zone. High stakes, Nick. We love these kind of games. We do. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.